Sega. If you go back in time and you kind of reflect on how the combat was in the old games, it's very basic. So we sort of went back to the drawing board and thought about how can we grow this combat system, how can we evolve it to preserve what was great about the previous games, but also modernize it for today's audiences. We didn't try to wrap that up in a lot of fluff. This is very much classic shinobi action. The game revolves around Jiro Musashi, who is Joe Musashi's father. Joe is the original character in the arcade version. One thing I loved about the old classic shinobi games is that pattern-based gameplay. There's a larger variety of enemies for sure, but we still have that classic feel. So you can pay attention to what an enemy does and eventually get really good at defeating them. It's what fans love and also allows us to present challenges and enemy combinations that become more difficult for the player as they progress through the levels. The gameplay in Shinobi is a mix of action and platforming. The focus of the game is definitely on your combat and how you're dispatching enemies. But the environment's the second part, that's the, the platforming element. The challenge of the game is understanding the character and the, the key movesets that they have. You have your ranged attacks, your throwing stars, your kanai. You can shoot enemies from afar, but then as you get close, you can juggle them up and then you know continue to hit them. You're going to get the tight combat in this experience. You're going to get the cool enemies and the difficulty. But there are a lot of great platforming sequences in this game, too, that are really going to push your skill set. A lot of it is about having to get to higher levels of the environment. You can uh, pick yourself up into other areas that you normally wouldn't have access to just through jumping alone. With the Nintendo 3DS, they have a parry function now. It has a dedicated uh, button. It's a push to block. I mean, you have to do it in the right timing for it. You can't just hold it down and block everything coming at you. You have to be more reactive and act more kind of defensively and instinctively. Another feature that we wanted to bring to the forefront in this game is the scoring system. You know, the old versions of the game also kept track of score but it's fundamentally more important in this version of the game. Going along with the scoring system, we have what's called a multiplier system in the game. If you keep killing enemies, your multiplier goes up and that affects your score. If you can keep that up, you can get higher and higher multipliers. If you're a very good player, you can go through, kill enemies in very stylistic ways, not get hit. Your score is gonna go up, up, and up, and give you very, very high. That's a sort of a nice way of differentiating Shinobi from a lot of the other action games. You can change not only the analog stick uh, to the control pad, but you can change every button in the game to, to map to whatever you like. So, you know, B isn't your preferred jumping button, or you don't want to have the katanas on A. I mean, like, you can change all that for you depending on what your, your preferred stylings are. An aspect that we really wanted to keep from the old games is giving players all their movesets from the very beginning. We didn't want a situation where you'd progress through the game and you would unlock a move and then you'd progress on, you unlock another move. We really want to give the player access to their whole arsenal of attacks and abilities and allow them to get better with it as they progress through the game. As you play through and you have these moments of just pure skill, this you know, zen of gaming that you kind of have, it, it just is so much fun. It kind of gets your adrenaline pumping. It's a fantastically produced action platforming game, totally in the vein of Shinobi totally new and current. When everything clicks, it's just a very clean, really excellent, really tight experience.